Hello and welcome to the Empower Couples Podcast, where here you get modern, non-boring relationship advice for you and your partner to communicate like pros, fight smarter, and stay on the same team no matter the challenge that you face. I am one of your hosts, Aaron Freeman. And I'm Jocelyn Freeman, but you all just know us as the Freemans. And this episode is the brutally honest feedback for the wives and women to have better relationships. Yes, the last episode was providing brutally honest feedback for the men, and we received so many messages and remarks about how much it spoke to you. And even men on the sessions had pages of notes and actually oh, said, yeah, you know, that, yeah. they showed it. And I'm like, wow, okay, that's awesome. And what point really stood out? And so we love that you are being receptive to this, both partners, and that's what it's going to take. And so this episode, providing the feedback for the wives and the women, doesn't negate the positive changes that men can make. If both of you say, here's how I'm going to do better, and you both step up to the plate, it will make the world of a difference, right? So it all, we always hear it takes two to tango, and it takes two of you to win. Mm-hmm. And I love it because right before we came home to record, we just moved to Gilbert, Arizona. Oh, yeah. We've been moving the past couple of days, getting things set up. We went over to our friend's house. It's 8 p.m. here again. My back is hurting from the move. I was just laying on the ground. But honestly, we were so committed to having this podcast out. Mm-hmm. I even loved hearing the or seeing the story shares mm-hmm. from women saying, well, I can't wait to see the one about us. Yeah. About the wife, so that was really great. But I think to your point, you were about to make. We were just at our friend's house, and we were talking about our intentions mm-hmm. and how to be better as partners. And what I just realized, I didn't even make it an hour because <laughs> I, I said what the pattern was that I noticed for myself, and then I just did it to you right before we started this. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not pointing that out. I'm glad you saw that for yeah. yourself. But we set these intentions for how each of us could be better partners. And that's what we hope this episode provides for you is that you extract even one of the points and say, this is how I'm going to do better. And I hope that you listen to the episode for feedback for men as well. So these two are going to make a difference when you both do the work. Before we go into the feedback, we want to make sure, because it's your last opportunity to get signed up for the five-day couples challenge, oh, yeah. which starts January 23rd, 2023. And as of right before recording this, 332 couples are registered from literally all over the world. I've seen registrations from different parts of Africa and Asia and Europe and literally every continent except Antarctica because it's too cold there. (laughs) But I love that couples are coming together to start the year on a positive note because for these five days, we're going to provide daily lessons on the five C's, communication, conflict, connection, collaboration, and overcoming challenges. And not only will you get a brief but potent lesson for each one each day, but you're going to have an exercise that you can do in as little as 10 minutes together. And so no matter how busy you are, I mean, I get it. We are recording at 8 p.m. Our baby's in bed. After moving. Yeah, so we know busy, right? But we are going to make it so that it's meaningful, even though it's brief. So go to mycoupleschallenge.com and get registered to join us next week, January 23rd. And with that, let's get into the first piece of feedback for the wives, which is to reduce the frequency of the criticisms and the corrections. Oh, the two C's, criticisms and corrections. Right, so I definitely have had to learn over the years to notice when I wasn't really focusing on expressing what I do want, what I need, what I hope for, and instead I would say it in this kind of underhanded or undercut or indirect Hmm. criticism. And I, I'd have to really reflect even more. Yeah, and I think it's also more to your point. I think mm-hmm. you're also about to make. Yeah. You start to share more about what you want us. I'll be the general male husband at this mm-hmm. point. Sharing with us what you want us to stop doing mm-hmm. or what you don't want. Mm-hmm. And then kind of that over a certain frequency starts to just feel like it wears us down like... It's kind of like over and over and I keep on hearing it. But when it's about what you don't want rather than what you do want, Mm -hmm. it just does keep feeling like I just can't do it the way you want it. Like you need me to change. And so I did want to say one quick thing and then I know I'm taking over. But for 
reserved, more reserved partners Mm -hmm. versus more assertive partners on the male side, it's going to affect us differently. Mm. I just want to make that point. Okay. And I'd love to come back to that. But I know that for me, I had to realize that it wasn't effective, right? Like for me to just make these little criticisms to you or any even, I definitely did this a lot in my past relationships where it's like I had to critique. I had to have it my way. And I think that this comes down to sometimes more of a flexibility thing, right? And that we can have different standards for how things are done. Hmm. I just had to realize that it's just not effective. Like what I'm really trying to do, like the positive intention underneath is, is to communicate to you something I want or I need or I'd hope for. But when I do it in a way that just is like a little jab, it really turns into a withdrawal, right? Mm -hmm. It's like I end up withdrawing from your love account and it doesn't respect you. It doesn't, Mm -hmm. you know, have you feel appreciated. And in fact, does it motivate you to step up and do more? (laughs) No, no. Well, it has me want to withdraw and then just do it the way I want to do it and probably not tell you. Right. So think for yourself, if this is one that you can resonate with, where am I making these criticisms and correcting too much? And here are some questions to ask yourself. Number one, does this really need to be said or is this actually going to push my partner away or withdraw from their love account? Is this really that important to me or am I being inflexible? And I think that this comes down to a lot of self-awareness and reflection of, is it really about this? So for example, and then we'll go to the next one, let's say you tend to make a lot of corrections about how they clean up the kitchen or that you say, oh, why do or you do that? Or whether they with the- clean up the kitchen at all. Right. Do they help at all. <laughs> or how. Now, they should definitely help with the kitchen. <laughs> by the- Our reel is going viral about that, by the way. But so you should definitely have help and be a team in the kitchen, but Let's say you make a lot of remarks about how they do the dishwasher or the dishes or that this and that. Is it really about that or is it that you aren't feeling loved and appreciated? And so sometimes we can make these little criticisms and corrections when it's really about some other more emotional need that we're kind of trying to get our partner to like wake up and see it. Hmm. One thing before you go to the next point, I just wanted to add, you know, just from my perspective, I think what could be done instead just let it simmer. Mm. I mean, just let it simmer for a minute. Like just, you don't have to say it right now. And of course we want you to have the opportunity to express it. It's not about suppressing things, but I think if there was some brutally honest feedback, it's just, you don't have to say it right now. Mm. Set up at the end of your day to have a time of getting feedback or almost like performance. How did we do today? What could have been better? This could also be done in your family meeting, let's say at the end of the week, but like just just be with it for a minute. Don't you don't need to share it with me. If there's another opportunity that I can be better later, like let's do that then. Mm. Cuz I find when I'm focused on something, like I really want to complete that task. So if I'm getting like a bunch of remarks from you and you're like in another room and it feels like another criticism and it just just doesn't work. Mm. It's like this now is not the time. Mm. Look, I'm all down for changing behavior and having it work for you. But just not right now. Just it's not the moment for it. Okay. So the timing <laughs> is important for sure. Timing is important and the delivery and being assertive and sharing what we do want rather than what we don't want. But again, the things that are actually important to you. And that's what you need to have discernment about. Let's go to the second piece. And I think I need to bump up the brutal a little bit. So let me try and okay, bump, bump, bump up the brutal. You, I think you're doing pretty good. I need to be <laughs> more brutal. But the next one is to be more mindful and focus on processing and regulating your emotions before you just go take it out on your partner. Mm. This was real. I mean, all of these are things that I have definitely worked on and continue to bring awareness. But I notice that You know, women, because we tend to be even more expressive of our emotion, that doesn't mean men don't have emotions. That's social programming. They also are emotional beings. But I notice that women can kind of boil and boil and so much comes up and then we will take it out as opposed to, and I gave this feedback to one of our female clients on the phone was I said, I really invite you right now to... Focus on how you can regulate 
yourself before going to your partner because the intensity in which you can go to your partner can feel overwhelming and they miss the message right? Mm. Because you go to them with the anger, with the sadness. Now, it doesn't mean you can't feel angry, that you can't feel sad, that those aren't all valid emotions. But what happens when we can do some regulating, which means, by the way, to go from a more intense emotional state to more neutral, to where we are thinking more clearly and we are able to express ourselves in a more constructive way. And so to have, again, it comes down to self-awareness with almost everything to say, am I actually in the best space to express this? So I'm trying to be more present in my body and say, okay, I'm feeling, it was just a little bit ago, I was confronted with something that doesn't even have to do with us. It actually has to do with a family member. And I was feeling myself like get this intensity. And had I not been aware, I would have kind of come to you and the next thing you did or said, I just would have like, you know, Mm. like taken it out on you. Oh, yeah. And actually, there's a term for that called displacement. Mm. So to displace is to, you know, you have this emotion and it has to go somewhere. And so it's like, oh, you're the you're right in front of me. So Mm. you're going to take it. Now, I know there are instances where it actually is about your partner. So I'm still inviting you. I'm challenging you to get better at regulating your emotions, trying to get to a more neutral space and then expressing yourself, mm. which there are many methods for how to regulate. Yeah, I was uh, just sitting here thinking about the times that that's happened and also putting myself in the shoes of a lot of the male partners that you know we're either coaching with or done breakthrough sessions on. And I just feel like at times, I guess more for the reserve partners again. I don't know why. I mean, that's because mm-hmm. that's what I am. Mm-hmm. But it can start to have me feel like you're taking advantage of my niceness Mm -hmm. in a way. And I can also think, would you speak to your mom like this? Would you speak to a boss? Would you speak to a friend like this? Mm -hmm. Would you just come out and say whatever you want? Because that was pretty hurtful. And so that's kind of how it impacts me and, again, the people that we've talked to. And then also hitting on that last point, it makes me mad or also men Hmm. because like i mentioned it feels as if if i was to speak to you it comes down to the fairness Mm -hmm. i remember the webcast we were doing right and i think that's the trigger part for men it's about i don't I haven't been speaking to you like that. Like Mm. if I just let my emotions fly, Mm. you would never be okay with that. Mm. Or if I said the thing, so it feels like it gets into this battle of fairness Mm -hmm. and imbalance. And also, yeah, I think you're taking advantage of my niceness here. Like if I was about to say what I wanted to say, this wouldn't go well (laughs) type of thing. Mm -hmm. No, I get it. And I definitely think that again, both partners can do their part. And that's why there's make sure you listen to the episode for men as well. But this point is we have to be 100% responsible for our own emotions. That doesn't mean your partner can't support you or hear you or like be with your emotion, but we need to downregulate our emotions through breathing or walking or go and cry or go and talk to someone, go and do a workout class, whatever, to come back to a more neutral place so that we can respectfully speak to our partners. Made me think that displacement leads to disrespect. Okay. I was trying to think of two two Ds. (laughs) But let's move to the third one. Yeah. I was trying to just have something memorable right there. Hmm. But the third one I'm really excited (laughs) to go into The third point is if you choose to forgive, you have to leave it in the past. Don't bring this up as ammo later. So forgiveness is always a hot button. And we've done several episodes on forgive and actually a a recent one about four Mm -hmm. keys to forgiveness. So we are not stepping over the fact that if your partner does or says something that is hurtful and that needs repair, We are so key on the repair process. Mm -hmm. We actually have, I don't want to spoil it yet, but we have a new repair tool coming soon. It's going to be coming after the five-day challenge. I know. So definitely keep listening after the challenge because that is going to be so good. So repair is required. There is acknowledgement of responsibility. So that's all given, right? And if you choose 
to forgive, whether it's forgiving because there was a breach of trust, which is a bigger thing, or forgiving because they haven't been prioritizing you, or forgiving for how they talk to you, whatever it is, big or small. Because you actually use the repair process. Yeah, bigger. Yeah, you use the repair process. If you choose to forgive, you can't keep bringing it up anytime you're upset. Mm. And then here, let me lay out every wrongdoing. Right. So the scorecard comes out. Exactly, because you just drag the past into your present and even into your future. And we don't always love generalizations, but again, there are themes and patterns that we notice because we talk to people, human beings, all day, every day. And we notice that men tend to be better at kind of drawing a line in the sand. Mm. And when they say they're going to forgive something or something's the past, it's almost like you maybe you guys have this and I'd have to look up the brain science with something this about short-term memory right it's like <laughs> almost like you guys literally delete the memories or something because even men will be like hmm I don't even remember and I, that just made them sound stupid I'm <laughs> not trying to say oh huh. no I'm not at all trying to say that men are stupid what, what's interesting is a side note because we were just talking about this with our friend same friend because mm-hmm. now we live so close that we <laughs> talk to them now I've been three out of three days but Women have a sort of a short-term memory on a number of things as well, like giving birth. Mm. Like you forget. And it really is evolutionary. It's built in. It's biological, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you remembered how painful it was, like how many people would want to have a second child? (laughs) Yeah. But there was something else that she wrote up. Do you remember? It was childbirth and then there was something else. Just the early years of having a a kid and like the, you know, being a mom. Toddler. That's right. A mm -hmm. mom to like one to three year olds. Right. And how you My mom is in town, Mm -hmm. which is awesome. She's helping us with the move and watching Sky while we do that. And... I, it was pretty rough for my mom. Mm-hmm. She didn't sleep for like literally four months. And she was the generation where men, she told us this, did not help with diapers. She said, your dad not once Th- That was the first time I heard that. A that diaper. was a surprise. She said he never even gave us a bath. Oh that was a surprise too. So I didn't know that. The generational differences are so interesting, right? But we digress. So the point is we as women can tend to have better memories with events and kind of keep track Mm. maybe by choice by nature who knows but i'm encouraging you and challenging you that if you say you're going to forgive whatever it is big or small and you said that and you did the repair work then you don't get to just bring it up anytime you want to make your partner feel bad or they do something wrong and so you need to relist the wrongdoings it's like constantly picking at a scab. So imagine you're healing like a wound and it's getting better and like new skin is coming and like you're feeling better. And then you just are like, oh, but let me scratch that entire scab off. (laughs) I know that's a dramatic example, but you have to draw a line in the sand. And let's say, okay, well, it's January, 2023 if you're listening to this episode right now, and maybe last year was hard, maybe it was brutal, maybe you two weren't your best partners for each other. And it's a it's a new year, and if you're listening to this episode, and maybe the five-day couples challenge is that for you too. Maybe you draw a line in the sand before five-day couples challenge, after five-day couples challenge, and you say, look, we weren't our best, we did some things, we said some things, but we are saying this is the line and we're going to stop bringing up the stuff before. And actually a couple we're working with, we just finished maybe their two, second or third session. And they said that. They said, you know what? We are going to forgive each other and we're going to stop dragging this old stuff. Now we've been talking about repair. So that's again, a given. You got to take responsibility. You got to acknowledge the hurts. Anything you'd add to this as well, Aaron? Well, let me ask you. So what level of brutal do you feel like you're at? I don't I feel like I'm not being brutal enough. That's like I need to knows. step up like the like mean cheer coach kind of vibe. Like <laughs> mean come cheer on, coach. stop bringing right. up the past. Well, I'll step it up then a little bit here okay. then to close this out. I mean, raise your standard for what you're going to commit to. If you're going to commit to forgiveness, be committed to it. Mm. It's a part of being truthful. If you're going to say, I forgive this, then then be truthful. Forgive it. Don't bring this up later just because you're reactionary. You had some emotion come up. That does not give you the right. If you say, I forgive this, you waive your right to bring this up as ammo at any other time. 
it's it's not fair fighting. Mm. It's not you're not being your word. It's not committing yourself to anything. Raise your standard of your commitment to forgiveness. Yes. Okay. Boom. He he is the brutal coach here. <laughs> uh, maybe you're a bad cop. I'm good cop. I'm sure. <laughs> um, because I know that can be a trigger. I just do want to acknowledge that there is an asterisk there. You can get triggered sometimes. You can have the past memories get brought up sometimes because it can be programmed into your nervous system or whatever. And you can communicate through that. Hey, I'm being triggered about the past and this is coming up and I just need to process through this. That's different than, oh yeah, you upset me. So let me list all these wrongdoings and bring this up. And almost what I noticed that women can do sometimes is like completely erase all of the positive momentum. Like almost just, oh, we were doing good and we made progress, but you know what? This thing now reminds me of the past. So everything else gets like erased and deleted. And so you have to acknowledge both the change as well as putting the past in the past. I'll bring a softer approach this time. Okay. And this isn't just for women. I realize I almost did this the other day. Hmm. It was to this point. I had said in my mind, something happened and I thought to myself, this is not a big deal. It's me being inflexible going to your previous point. So I don't need to get upset about this. I don't need to express it. It's one of those blips. I'm just going to move on and I forgive it. Mm -hmm. And I made that conscious choice. Thankfully, we do this work. I mean, it just so turns out Hmm. that relationships and communication, and I could probably get better, is, but this is what we focus on. So this is what we think about. So you brought up something to me and I understand I will had the the compulsion to bring up the thing that I yesterday said I was forgiving. Mm. And like it was in my throat if you had that <laughs> feeling. But thankfully some part of my nervous system the thought went to my brain faster than the vocal cord. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm like, wow, it was really interesting. Like, what does it actually take if I say I'm forgiving something Mm -hmm. to truly commit to that and put it in the past? Because here I did have the impulse Mm -hmm. to bring it up, even though I consciously knew. And maybe that's as far, maybe that's the best we can ask. I don't know. Like, hey, I consciously forgave this. So when the impulse comes, maybe that commitment makes it strong enough to get to the conscious mind before it gets verbalized. Yeah, it definitely takes a choice and it takes not just saying everything out loud. I think there's kind of a common thread for all of these, which is think before you say it, you know, slow down. Don't just say oh, stuff. Simple. Right. <laughs> like don't just say stuff unconsciously, <laughs> you know, spew things out of your mouth, slow it down reflect. So those are the three points, right? So reduce the frequency of the criticisms and and corrections. Second, regulate your emotions or process before bringing it up in a reactionary way. And then if you choose to forgive, then leave it in the past. Don't bring it up as ammo. So we hope this was positive, helpful, good reminders. In addition to the episode, to keep with the theme, (laughs) I will continue to work on my brutalness, (laughs) I guess. Um, but also make sure you listen to the episode for the husbands and the men, because again, it takes both of you. There are both, there are things you both can improve on. By the way, we haven't asked for this in a little bit. If you enjoy our podcast and it makes a difference for you, it's 8.40 p.m. right now after our baby girl's in bed. And a great way you can say thank you to us. And we moved over the three days. I just want to put that in there. We're, we're just basically now begging you for <laughs> a five-star review on whichever platform you're listening on. Because that is a great way that we can just know you're listening and, you know, has us really feel a boost of motivation to continue to record. So if you can do a five-star review on whichever platform, that would mean the world to us. We can't wait to see you guys on the five-day couples challenge. And with that, we love you all. And we'll talk to you on the next episode.